make sure you follow their channel. Make sure you follow their channel. They got a lot of cool videos, okay? I like their I like their opener. That's nice. Their introduction is good. The Red Hunters are a loyalist chapter of the Adeptus Astartes created during the course of an unknown founding. The Red Hunters are themselves fairly mm -hmm. unusual when compared to other Space Marine chapters, due to the fact that they appear to serve as a, for want of a better term, pet chapter of the Imperial Inquisition. Oh, interesting. However, unlike other chapters with ties to the Inquisition, such as the Grey Knights or the Death Watch, the Red Hunters do not serve as a chamber This is like perfect for today. They just mentioned the Death Watch. I was like, oh man, that's perfect. Any one particular ordo, and can instead be called upon to serve any Inquisitor from any order oh, at really? any time. Hmm. As a result, in addition to defending worlds from predatory alien races or putting down secessionist rebellions, oh, this guy is screwed. the chapter will frequently find themselves <laughs> tasked with combating the servants of the ruinous powers. However, while the chapter have claimed many victories in the Emperor's name, the majority of these remain undocumented or have otherwise been expunged from official records, including those of the Red Hunters themselves. The reasoning for this is that whenever the Red Hunters encounter demonic entities or other such foes tainted by the corrupting influence of Chaos, any Battle Brothers that survive such an experience will be subjected to mnemonic purgation, so as to keep any knowledge regarding the existence of Chaos as closely guarded a secret as possible. While this mind wiping procedure will strip the chapter's warriors of their memories and even mm -hmm. their very personality, the Red Hunters will still retain their physical abilities, as well as that of their own natural martial prowess. Mm -hmm. As a result, the Red Hunters can be deployed time and time again to face the kinds of horrors that would shatter the sanity or otherwise necessitate the execution of lesser men. Okay, that's pretty neat. In addition, the Red Hunters will often be deployed by the Inquisition to monitor the actions of other Space Marine chapters, oh. particularly those found guilty of committing heretical acts that were not considered to be irredeemable. A particularly prominent example of this was shown following the events of got the Lamenters, War, in where a number of Red Hunter strike forces were tasked with shadowing the chapter fleets of the Lamenters, mm. Mantis Warriors, and Executioners chapters. I'm not familiar with the Mantis chapters, but the uh, Executioner chapter... Is that skin on his belt? Is that skin on his belt? That looks like a face chat. Obscure chat as they embarked upon their crusades of penitence. What also sets the Red Hunters apart from the majority of other chapters is that they are one of the few chapters known to actively worship the Emperor as a god. Oh, that's kind of cool. the Red Hunters' devotion in their worship of the God Emperor is reportedly so extreme that it has even led to other Space Marine chapters, such as the Grey Knights, to view the Red Hunters with disdain, <gasps> oh. believing them to be little more than religious fanatics. They're a little obsessed then. While the Red Hunters are certainly not alone in their belief in the Emperor as a deity, the doctrines and practices for the vast majority of Space Marine chapter cults will be in some way based upon traditions that predate the formation of the Imperial Church though these more secular chapters still nonetheless recognize the Emperor as the rightful master of mankind. In either case, with the vast majority of the chapter's records being unknown to both Imperial scholars and the Red Hunters themselves, the Pilgrim this has led to some debate regarding both as to when the chapter was founded, as well as the identity of their primogenitor Primarch. Yeah, I was gonna ask. So from which of the first founding legions could the Red Hunters be descended from? It'd be kind of funny if they were word bearers. It'd be kind of funny. Uh, which one would they be from? Maybe Imperial Fist? I'm not sure. From the outset, a few first founding chapters can be ruled out as being the potential primogenitors of the Red Hunters for a variety of reasons. For example, it would appear incredibly unlikely for the Red Hunters to be You're descended right. from the Salamanders. I agree. Due to the fact that prior to the onset of the Ultima founding, the Salamanders officially sired no successor chapters. In fact, following the introduction of the Codex Astartes, the Salamanders were the sole first founding legion to be made exempt from being divided into multiple <laughs> nice. chapters, due to them sustaining exceptionally heavy losses over the course of the Horus Heresy. In spite of this, however, it should be noted that some chapters, such as the Storm Giants and Black Dragons, are heavily rumored to be Salamander successors, with at least one source even outright stating this to be the case, hmm. although there are just as many, if not more, sources which appear to state the contrary. 
Likewise, it's also reasonable to assume that the Red Hunters are not descended from the Space Wolves, as prior to the Ultima founding, the Space Wolves would only sire a single successor chapter, the Wolf Brothers. And and it's funny, this is like a thing I don't know too much about. I'm more, I know a lot of 30k stuff, 40k less so. Um, so like how the chapters and stuff, that's a very new thing to me. <laughs> Russell, I suspect the Red Hunters are a word bearer successor chapter. Uh, yeah, that's what I... That's what I think too, but y un unlikely. However, over time, the gene seed of the space Ew. wolves would mutate and degrade to such an extreme Ew. degree that it would become biologically incompatible with anyone not born of the chapter's homeworld of Fenris, a detail which would in Ew. itself be a contributing factor to the eventual extinction of the Wolf Brothers. Given that there are no documented accounts of the Red Hunters lacking any of an Astartes organ implants, this would also appear to rule mm -hmm. out the possibility of the chapter being descended from either the Imperial Fists or the Raven Guard. Okay. Not only do both of these chapters lack a functioning Betches gland, an organ which allows a space marine to produce an acidic saliva, but the gene seed of the Raven Guard is also incapable of producing the mucronoid organ. I didn't know that. I didn't know that part. Oh. Oh, that's kind of cool, though. An implant that allows Nastartes to adapt to extreme changes in temperature. Could it be? While the Imperial Fists have over time lost the ability to produce the Susa membrane. Is. So, okay. We've kind of narrowed it down to Dark Angels. If we're talking Loyalist, Dark Angels, White Scars, Blood Angels. I don't know if it's the Blood Angels. It's probably the. Uh, I don't know. I'm actually not sure at all. An organ which allows a space marine to enter a state of suspended animation in response to severe physical trauma. Statistically, the most likely candidate for the primogenitor chapter of the Red Hunters would appear to be that of the Ultramarines. Really? This is due to not only the fact that the Ultramarines were the single largest Cutters, legion Cutters. of the Legione Astartes, and thus divided into the greatest number of successor chapters, that is true. but the chapter's gene seed is amongst the purest and most stable of all Astartes gene stocks, leading to it being the most commonly utilised whenever new Space Marine chapters were to be established. As a result, prior to the onset of the Ultima founding, an estimated 70% of all Space Marine chapters were believed to have been created from Ultramarine stock. Hmm. Aside from this, however, there is little else to support the notion of the Red Hunters being an Ultramarine successor chapter. Another possibility is that the Gene Seed of the Red Hunters was not derived from one of the Loyalist Legions, uh, uh, but instead drawn uh, from an altogether uh, different source. Uh? In this case, seeing as mm -hmm. how the Red Hunters are so closely tied to the Inquisition, with there even being unsubstantiated rumours suggesting that the Inquisition may have been responsible for the chapter's founding in the first place, could it be possible that the Red Hunters share their gene seed with another chapter that has close ties to the Inquisition, mm -hmm. the Grey Knights? Unlike other Space Marine chapters, whose gene seed is derived from one of the Primarchs, the genetically engineered sons of the Emperor himself, the gene seed of the Grey Knights, by contrast, was fashioned directly from the Emperor's own DNA. That's a thought. Because the Grey Knights, who serve as the chamber militant for the Inquisition's Ordo Malleus, utilize a unique gene seed source in the creation of their warriors, it wouldn't be entirely unreasonable to assume that the Red Hunters, who also serve as warriors and enforcers for the Inquisition, also draw upon such a source. In fact, some have even suggested that the Red Hunters, instead of merely sharing the same gene seed source, are themselves, in actuality, a Grey Knight successor chapter. One that would have been founded that seems directly odd. by the Inquisition themselves. Oh, if the Inquisition founded it, okay. there is admittedly okay. little evidence to support such a notion. In either case, this could even go some way in explaining the intense amount of secrecy regarding the chapter's history and lineage, as the very yeah, existence of the Grey Knights is considered to be one of the Imperium's best-kept secrets. Yeah, I would like to know those things. However, despite such a notion indeed being a fascinating one, there are a number of problems with this particular hypothesis. Let's hear them. The first and perhaps greatest of which is that, unlike the Grey Knights, the Red Hunters are confirmed to have incorporated Primaris Marines into their ranks. Hmm. While it remains unknown as to why the Grey Knights do not make use of this newest breed of Astartes warrior, some have speculated that the reason why is due to the gene seed of the Grey Knights themselves being, in some way, incompatible with the Primaris genome, which, if this were the case, would make it impossible for the Red Hunters to share the same gene seed source. Oh, that's a good Grey point. Hmm. Secondly, as mentioned earlier, 
The main reason pertaining to the intense veil of secrecy surrounding the Red Hunters is due primarily to their repeated involvement in battles against the forces of chaos. As an aside, it should be noted that while the Grey Knights are also frequently dispatched in order to combat the servants of the Ruinous Powers and demonic entities in particular, the Chapter's Warriors, unlike those of the Red Hunters, are never forced to undergo any sort of mind wiping procedure in the aftermath of such conflicts, oh. which in turn ensures that their memories remain fully intact. Okay, that's smart. Because of this, while there may at first glance appear to be some sort of correlation between the secrecy regarding the Grey Knight's very existence and the Red Hunter's own historical records, it seems more reasonable to assume that such connections are simply coincidence, as opposed to being signs of a shared heritage, ultimately making the idea of the Red Hunters drawing their gene seed from the same source as the Grey Knights fairly unlikely. So instead of sharing a gene seed with the Grey Knights, could it be possible that the Red Hunters were founded from the loyalist remnants of a traitor legion, specifically that of the 14th legion of the Legione Astartes, the okay. Death Guard? That's why While this the idea Death Guard. May at first glance seems somewhat outlandish, there is some circumstantial evidence to support such a possibility. During the course of the Istvan Free Purges, an event which took place during the earliest days of the Horus Heresy, a company of loyalist Death Guard warriors, under the command of Captain Nathaniel Garrow, would commandeer the Legion frigate Eisenstein and flee the Istvan system, in order to warn the Imperium of Horus' And that betrayal. fits, they could have Upon their arrival become the Primaris system, later. The surviving members of Garrow's company, who would become known henceforth simply as the Seventy, would be incarcerated huh. within the dungeons of the Somnus Citadel upon Luna, Terra's Moon, on suspicion of being traitors themselves. However, at least two of their number, including Garrow himself and a warrior named Hela Gaylor, would eventually find themselves inducted into the ranks of the Knights Errant, a small group of Astartes who served as elite agents for Malkador the Sigilite. I guess I didn't realize how many Loyalist Death Guard there were. That was something I, I haven't read any Death Guard books yet, and honestly, I think probably I should at this point, because I didn't realize how many were uh, Loyalists. Oh, and as for, uh, someone did a first time chat, custodian theme VTuber, maybe the coolest concept ever. I'm glad you like it. I like it too. <laughs> Regent of Terror, though for a time, it remained unclear as to what fate befell the rest of Garrow's men. Eventually, however, just days or weeks prior to the onset of the Siege of Terror, it will be revealed that these surviving Death Guard loyalists, as detailed within the novel The Buried Dagger, had been released from their captivity upon Luna and would subsequently go on to aid in the defense of the Imperial Palace. Because of this, some have speculated that those members of the Seventy who managed to survive the Horus Heresy could have served as the foundation for an entirely new Space Marine chapter following the onset of the Second Founding. After all, as mentioned earlier, at least two members of the Seventy would find themselves recruited into Malkador's service at some point in time during the Horus Heresy. The reason why this particular detail is so significant is that Malkador's own personal heraldry, a stylized eye, would eventually be adopted oh. by the Inquisition as their emblem of office. The Inquisitorial mm. Rosette, as this emblem would eventually become known, is also incorporated within the chapter iconography of the Red Hunters themselves, in where it is displayed prominently upon a bone white skull. As such, if the Red Hunters were a Death Guard successor chapter that was established as part I of like the I like that theory, family, honestly. Then this could at least partially explain as to why there is so much secrecy surrounding the chapter as Traitor Legion Gene Seed would, at least officially, be prohibited for use in the creation of new chapters going forward. But again, much like with the previously mentioned Grey Knights theory, there mm -hmm. are a number of problems with such a hypothesis. Ah, dang it. <laughs> the first of which is in regards to when the Red Hunters were established. Nathaniel Garrow is the chattest of all the Death Guard. He is the coolest guy. The earliest documented appearance of the Red Hunters within Imperial Records, as detailed within the second rendition of Imperial Armor Volume 2, was during the events of the Second Abonian Genocide, which took place around 688 and All of this 40, information I don't know. I have no idea. After the onset of the second founding. Now admittedly, given that the Red Hunters are known to have deleted a significant portion of their own historical records <laughs> in order to keep their battles against the forces of chaos a secret, it's not entirely unreasonable to assume that any of the chapter's records prior to M40 would have been erased for the same reason. However, this does seem incredibly unlikely. As statistically, if the Red Hunters had indeed existed since the time of the Second Founding, then surely the Chapter's Warriors would have encountered at least one of the more common threats faced by humanity, such as Orcs or Drukhari Raiders, at some point during the first 8,000 or so years of their existence. 
After all, the existence of these two Xenos races, the Orcs in particular, is effectively common knowledge throughout most of the Imperium, and thus there would be no reason for the Red Hunters, barring rare and exceptional circumstances, to delete any record of such encounters from their archives. Not only this, but following the War of the Beast, a conflict which took place around the time of the Four Founding, the Inquisition would itself be subdivided into two major Ordos, the Ordo Xenos, who would utilise the newly established Death Watch chapter for the mm -hmm. purpose of combating alien threats, okay. and the Ordo Malius, who would claim the Grey Knights as their militant arm in their wars against The Kings. Hereticus they felt left out. If the Red Hunters were established- They're like, we want our own chapter! We want our own space marines, please give us our own space marines! Prior to this, <laughs> then surely the Inquisition would have made sure to clarify that the chapter would be in service to both Ordos. Secondly, it's important to know that, while still referred to as the Seventy, only a relative handful of Garrow's loyalist Death Guard remained prior to the Siege of Terror. Given that Imperial forces sustained, to put it mildly, severe casualties during the course of the siege, yes, it's likely mildly. the majority of the Seventy would have simply fallen in battle. But even if all of Garrow's Death Guard managed to survive the events of the Horus Heresy, they would have simply been far too few in number to serve as the sole basis for an entire Space Marine chapter, as new chapters, as dictated by the terms of the Codex Astartes, were to be comprised of 1,000 Marines. As a result, if any of the 70 managed to survive to the onset of the Second Founding, it's more likely that they would have been simply integrated into another chapter, possibly even going as far as having their original Death Guard progenoid glands surgically removed and replaced with fresh ones derived from the DNA of their new chapter's primogenitor Primarch. Regardless, the Red Hunters have proven time and time again to be fanatically loyal to both the Emperor and the Imperium, even if the chapter is seemingly destined to remain blissfully unaware of their various accomplishments, origins, and lineage. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching. I like it. I don't know all the details, and he certainly knows way more than me. But I, I really liked. I know I kind of like seeing this parts of like obscure lore that I, I don't know much at all about.